it's Thursday. So previously on this channel, I have done Franken patterns, both with my own patterns and through collaborations with Skein Spider. So a Franken pattern is when you take pieces that aren't necessarily designed to go together and you use them to build a new creature or a Frank, if you will. So this can be done through alternating pieces with a friend or like we're going to do today, collecting different pieces from a group and then like picking numbers out of a hat. So a couple of weeks ago, I put the call out on Discord, send me your pieces and I will make them a Frank. So basically how it's going to work today is all of the pieces are numbered and all of the numbers are in my, my hat. <laughs> and I'm going to keep picking pieces at random until we've got something. I'm also allowed to design a couple of pieces if I feel like there's something specific missing, but uh, I'm going to mostly be using the pieces from the Discord. So on screen right now are the 16 pieces that had been submitted to the Discord at the time of filming. And of course, a massive thank you to everybody who submitted a piece. Uh, I probably won't get through all of them for today. 16 is a bit much to pack into one creature. But for anybody out there who's interested in trying this for themselves, all of the pieces are currently available on the Complicated Knots Discord. There will be a link in the description. And make sure that you, if you end up using any of the pieces listed there, that you send your thanks to the designers of the individual pieces. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so the first piece we're going to be making is... Number seven. Okay, so I'm just pulling up number seven now. Okay, so P7 has been designed for us by Sens Toy Box on Instagram. And it looks like it's a top hat. So that's just a really fun place to start. So we'll make that now. Okay, so I've just had a little read through the piece and there's nothing in there that's too unfamiliar to me. Um, because it needs two colors and it looks like one color is just like the stripe around the middle, I think I'm gonna do a purple top hat just to avoid black. So we're gonna do a dark purple top hat with a pale purple stripe around the middle. I'm just going to tuck all of my ends in here. I've quite unintentionally made this a very Willy Wonka-esque top hat, but uh, hopefully we can make that work. And I may not use it as a hat in the final creature as well, because like a stump like this could easily become a nose piece or a, some kind of leg. I probably shouldn't have gone straight to the dark colours with it, but I will just make another one if I need it in a different set of colours later. There is our first piece, which is piece number seven. So I'm going to pop that to one side and we're going to pick another one. Okay, so our second piece. Piece number two. Okay, so it looks like piece number two is brought to us by Elf's Crochet. And uh, I might have to make this piece to get a feel for what the shape actually is. It looks like it's some kind of like swoop shape, but I'm seeing a lot of picots in the, in the actual instructions. So I'm really curious to see how that's going to work out. I'm doing this right. I'm I'm not sure. I'm just gonna test our row counting abilities here just to be on the safe side. We are doing fine. Okay, and there is piece number two. Now, I don't know if I made this piece correctly because I've never seen Picots used quite that way, but that's half the fun of these challenges is that you get to learn all kinds of interesting new techniques. So I can see this being a piece that I make multiples of. But anyway, we need to get a bit of a wriggle on because I've only made two pieces so far and I know that I'm going to need at least six. So let's hurry up and pick the next number. So we have our bowl. Okay, 
Number 11. Okay, so number 11 comes to us courtesy of Kitai. It looks... <laughs> and it's this really cute uh, sort of head and body bobbly type piece. It looks like we've got two colours involved there as well. So I'm going to stick with my yellow just to try and build some kind of sensible colour story here and pick sort of another probably soft pastel colour for my alternate. So I'm going to whip that up now. I'm going to try and stick with yellow as my main colour, I think. So yeah, it turns out that the colour changes aren't actually part of the pattern, which I think is going to work better for me anyway. This had a really nice use of short rows in there, but it's definitely harder than it looks, so be warned if you also try to do piece 11. So, so far we've had sort of front and back post detailing. We've had a use for picots that I'd never even considered, but it might be, might be common, it might just be me. And we've had short rows used, so I'm really interested to see what we're going to find in piece number four. Okay. A little rummage and we're gonna go for blue okay so we've got a blue one piece number eight okay so piece eight is this little kind of teardrop almost shape and comes to us from coalesce on discord so i think i'm hmm, do i want to keep working in my yellow it looks also like a body part i think until i've got enough pieces to form a body i'm going to keep working in my yellow this is the close-up sensory experience Please enjoy the tapping and the squeaking. And there is our fourth piece, which is, of course, piece number eight done. All right, so these next couple are going to go faster. <laughs> I said that last time, but. Oh, we've got another yellow one. Piece number 14. Okay, so piece number 14 is this really good looking leg or hoof type shape. And it was submitted by Sanity Creations on Discord. <laughs> And then after that, I drew piece number 15, which was brought to us by Goofy Crochet on Instagram. And it's like this perfect little blister type piece to add just some color or texture to the body. So that's six pieces that we've pulled out of the hat, which is normally how many I would use for a Franken pattern. So it kind of leaves me at this interesting place where I don't know if we've got enough to form a full creature yet. But at the same time, I've kind of got this idea that's forming. So the pieces we have so far are a top hat. We have... It's kind of very interesting sort of drop shape that I have kind of a plan for, but I'll get to that in a minute. We've got this little duck. <laughs> it's really cute. Uh, we have sort of a larger teardrop shape with a point decidedly on one side there. We have, I believe this is intended to be a leg, but I'm deliberately keeping this round for now because I feel like it has more potential than just being a leg. Though it is a fantastic leg shape, gotta say. Like if you flatten that out into a hoof, spectacular job. But the joy of front post and back post stitching is you can also invert things. And suddenly we have like a little sucker or a little eyeball. And then we have a fantastic little blister. And this is great, guys. If you ever want to submit pieces for the Franken pattern, little pieces are wonderful because they, they add a lot of texture and dimension where like they don't help build foundations, but designs aren't made on foundations. 
Well, they are made on foundations, but I think you know what I'm trying to get at there. So great. I can't quite shake the image of all of these pieces as a crab. So the plan, the plan is these will be my eye stalks. I don't know if I'll tuck that all the way in like that or just insert an eye through the middle of it. Then we can have some like decorative bits down his shell just to give him some color. Then I'll use pieces 11 and 8 to form like some really juicy claws. So like that's like the shoulder joint and then like he ends up with like this really juicy like wah -wah type claw there. Then I think I can use this piece and just by like stuffing it and then sewing this open edge straight like that it kind of gives us pointy crab legs. I'm hoping that works that's my idea right now. And then the top hat he, he's a crab in a top hat and that's just This piece is so specific, but it just instantly adds uh, just an overwhelming wealth of character to this guy. So I think what I'm going to need to do is design up a pancake or like a UFO biscuit type of piece just to act as like the main puck of our Frank. So that's what I'm going to try and do now. So the goal for me was to create two oval type pieces that could act as both the top and bottom of the crab. So this is what I've gone with and I've made two of them. Okay, so these are the pieces that I have to assemble. I'll just clear all the stuff out of the way. So these are the pieces that I have to assemble my finished Frank. So I've made two of my like custom designed piece to act as like a body. Hello. Then this piece here is going to be an eye stalk. And I'm going to need two of those. Then we just have these little ducks. And I'm going to make those shoulder and arm joints. We have some of these little elongated teardrop things. And they are going to be legs. And I'm going to need a lot more of those. Like that. We made one big juicy teardrop. And I went and made another one of those. And I'm going to use those as... Part of the front claws. I've got some little spotties that I don't know if I'm going to attach them as like shoulder blades or like spots for his back. And then of course finally he has his top hat. So basically we're making a crab. I'm going to start by just assembling the individual pieces. So that starts with these legs. I need a little bit of stuffing and then I need to just sew up the uh, open edge of each of them. I'm sewing the legs I'm only picking up the front loops on either side that is because I want not a trace of those stitches to be visible okay so we have six scuttly legs next I want to focus on our eye stalks so I don't know we've got some options here because we've done this wonderful row of I think it was back post it was one of the post stitches around the rim it means that we can full-on invert these if we want or I can stick a safety eye through the middle or I can just leave them as green and I just I don't know what I want to do with them yet so I'm going to grab some eyes and we're going to play a little bit I don't want to stretch my stitches out too much so I'm going to not go straight through the magic ring okay there we go all right so I definitely don't like them sticking out but if I stick the eye in and then stick the eye in do we like that I think we're just going to go with green eyes and we're going to leave them poking out rounded off like this. I'm going to stuff them a little bit just down to this little elbow knee joint. I suppose it's neither an elbow or a knee joint given that they're eyeballs. <laughs> but then I think I'm going to need this bit here to sit completely flat inside the body. So I have to just stuff very carefully. So that's the first one stuffed. I'm just going to stuff the other one. Oh, there we go. Got both of those stuffed and ready to peep. I think what we should do next 
is assemble his pinches. So I'll grab those. I think the rounded head part of this is going to be the shoulder joint and then this can be like the, the thumb. And this is kind of the rest of the pincher because I think that's just a pretty good shape there. It means that I need to create a pretty nice join here to make it believable, particularly as I didn't introduce any contrasting colors, which is my bad. So I think we're going to call upon the tortoise in our time of need. That's pretty good. It'll, it'll move around a little bit as we stitch it, but I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to sew these two claws together now. I'm going to stick with my... Where's my needle? Did anybody see where I put it? How? How did, how did it wander off? When did it wander off? <laughs> I found it, never mind. So I'm gonna stick with my yarn needle just because I get a more disciplined join between pieces when I use a blunt needle like this because it forces me to position my stitches very carefully instead of just relying on the curved nature of my needle to cheat. two claws and I'm pretty happy with the join I got between the pieces there they are supposed to look like a little bit separate but they are nice big squishy crab claws so happy 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 so that kind of leaves me with just like two things to do here so the first is work out how to assemble the body and the second is work out what to do with my spots so with the hat going on top of the shell I think the spots are going to crowd the shell too much do I like them as like leg spots anyway I think what I need to do is pop my spots to one side and just start pinning everything onto the body to get a real feel for exactly what size and shape things are going to turn out. And from there, I can work out what we're missing. So one thing I was particularly pleased with is you'll note that the edge of one of these pieces has the loops from our stitches, as per normal, as you would expect. But one of them has this cool little finishing stitch on the edge. And literally all you do to make that is after you pull up the first loop of your single crochet, you rotate the hook the 360 degrees around and then you then you yarn over and finish off your stitch. So yeah, that's just a little crabby tip. Wanna come see our new best friend? Oh, that looks really good. I know you want to do that. <laughs> oh, there's a third option, which is... Oh, well, his top shell's not on yet. That's why I don't have it. Mm. So I was messing around and I worked out a use for those spot pieces. As they are going to add a point to the, the thumb joint on each of my claws. So I will only be using two of them, but I still think that's a really good use for this particular piece. Right there, like that. So... I was looking at him all assembled just then and I realized that so much of him is yellow that I'm losing a lot of the details. So what I think I'm going to do is change his textures slightly by just doing a little bit of embellishment just because I think he deserves it. He's, he's a really good little crab and he deserves to be fancy. So we're just going to try and make him a little bit fancier. <laughs> About those stitches have has really emphasized this point on the back but at least I guess I'll have a top hat to cover that. Okay the assembly for this is a little complicated just because I need so many things both in and out of the shell but I think one thing that I can fairly comfortably do at this point is sew everything to the base piece and just see what we're working with.
So I guess the last real step here is to stuff our crab. I did leave an opening. Hopefully this works. <laughs> first person to create a Frank using these pieces. So I just wanted to just take a moment and share some of the other creatures that have cropped up on the Discord since we started this a couple of weeks ago. First up, we have Globby the Sunshine Fish, created by The Bug Stitch. Honestly, it's good to know that I'm not the only one who sees fish in everything. This has such a happy colour palette, and he reminds me of a fancy sea cucumber friend. This is Francine, created by Sanity Creations. I feel like Francine likes to leap out of cupboards and boxes of people in the middle of the night. Is that just me? Next, we have an unnamed Frank created by Nox Pandorum slash Kataris. To me, it looks like a cute little cuttlefish or some sort of beetle. In any case, his knobbly texture is very pleasing. Next up, we have Winnie created by Novelty. She is very dragon, but also just a little bit like those Star Wars camels in the face area. I'm a little sad I didn't pull the wing piece out of the hat. My crab would have been introduced to a whole new world. And finally, we have created by Sencha. A self-proclaimed healer with a hat full of dubious cures, a fused gestalt mass of 10,000 aquatic worms. Get ready for Cain and the giant leech. Is this a reference to something? He's riding his giant leech into town. <laughs> oh, they love each other. I love them. It just feels like there's a really rich backstory there somewhere. And there is my finished Frank. So in the end, I used one copy of piece seven, six copies of piece two, two copies of piece 11, two copies of piece 8, two copies of piece 16, two copies of piece 14, and finally two copies of piece 15. And the best thing about it is I can take these exact same pieces and make something completely different tomorrow. So I guess there is actually just one final question and that is how does a crab wear a hat? Is it like this? Is it like this? Or like balanced in the middle there like that? Or does he like hold the hat in a claw like a gentleman? Like, let me know in the comments how crabs wear their hats. I think for now, I'm just going to sit it over the, kind of like, like a dude hiding his blind spot. He's just going to hide his back, his back lump with it until I get more confirmation from you guys as to how crabs wear hats. So there is my finished Franken pattern made from pieces designed by you guys. So if any of you are interested in making your own Franken crab or Franken pattern, all of the pieces are available on Discord. I'm hoping that a few more will sort of join the myth so that this can become kind of like a regular thing. Because uh, the more pieces, the more different kind of configurations we can come up with for them. Okay, that's it for this week. Bye! Your balance is pretty good up there.